All right, so for this class, we're just going to see how much we can get through with acid base equilibrium and possibly a little buffers as well. All right, so let's just, let's just start off back with the definition of an acid. Anybody know, how would you define an acid? It an acid. ionizes in water and releases H plus ions. Please repeat. It completely ionizes in water and releases H plus ions. All right, um, that is correct. But, but for this one, I want to use a specific person. Oh, right. I had said I was going to do all concepts, but I'm going to do it in the next class. All right, so I'm going to do PH for today. Branston and Lowry. What is their definition of an acid and a base? The acid is a proton donor. Right. So acids are acids are proton donors. Right? And the base is a proton acceptor. Right. So for K. This is the definition we are working with, the branstead lowry definition of acid and base. So acids are proton donors and bases are proton acceptor. Before that, we do add the Arrhenius theory about bases having the hydroxide ion, but not every base will have the hydroxide ion. So like sodium hydroxide, potassium hydroxide, right? Not those are bases, those contain the OH ion. But if you look at ammonia, ammonia is a base, right? Ammonia is a base. However, does it have OH ion present? No. No. Right. So the definition, it changed. So Branstead modify it and say it's a proton acceptor. So ammonia, it has a lone pair. So if you have a lone pair, you can act as a base. So ammonia has a lone pair, so it can accept a hydrogen ion. So a base does not mean you have to have OH ion present in the compound or the molecule, right? So ammonia is a base because it can accept a proton because it has the, it has the lone pair. Right. What I really want to get into over is the calculations. All right. So go we'll move on from the definition. I'm just going to go to the to the formulas and how to approach the questions. All right. So pH, if we want to calculate the pH of a solution, what is the formula for calculating pH? Minus log. Um, Negative log and the concentration of hydrogen ion. That is correct. So pH is equal to negative log, the concentration of the hydrogen ion. Now, before I go to the formula, I should explain weak acids first. What is a weak acid? How do you differentiate between a weak acid and a strong acid in terms of a definition or explanation? A weak acid or weak question. Ionizes in an aqueous solution while a strong acid completely ionizes in aqueous solution. All right, that's correct. So if you have HCl, when HCl ionizes 
you would get the hydrogen ion and the chloride ion. If you have F uh, noic acid, which is a weak acid, you would get the F uh, noic ion and the hydrogen ion. Now the equation is not going to show you that this fully ionizes and this partially ionizes, all right? Can anybody explain what fully ionizes mean? So if we say HCl fully ionizes and f acid, which is a weak acid, partially ionizes, what does that mean? If it's fully ionized, all of its H plus ions are released and partially. Please repeat that part. If it fully ionizes, what happens? All of the H plus ions are liberated. And if it's partially ionized? Some remain. All right, so the reason why I asked it is because I know most students kind of misunderstand what it actually means. All right, so both of these, right? They are acids, they are going to donate a proton. So when we say partially ionized, it's not in terms of this molecule here, partially ionizing. When you have an acid, what happens? You will have a lot of molecules present, all right? So if you have a solution of ethanoic acid, you will have a lot of ethanoic acid molecule present, all right? You, all right, so you have to remember when you when you have a solution, it's not just one HCl present. You will have you will have a lot of HCl molecules and a lot of ethanoic acid molecule in your solution. Now, when something ionizes, it means that you are going from the molecule to an ion. So ionization so if it ionizes it's going from the molecule to the ion so when we say it partially ionizes we're looking at the amount of molecules that are converted to ions so on this board, we have one, two, three, four, five ethanoic acid molecules. So if we say partially ionizes, what that means, out of the six, probably just two of them will actually be converted to ions. All right. So partially ionizing, it means that a few, just a small amount of the molecules are going to actually dissociate. That is why the pH of a weak acid is not very low because for a solution to be acidic, you must have hydrogen ions present. So if you only have a fraction of the molecules dissociating, you will not have a lot of hydrogen ions present in solution. So weak acids, only a small percentage of the molecules dissociate into ions. And as a result, you will not have a high concentration of hydrogen ions in solution, all right? So when you say weak acid is not in terms of as I said, not all of the hydrogen ions, it's actually comparing the amount of molecules. So only a small amount of them actually ionize. So within a solution of ethanoic acid, most of it will remain as ethanoic acid molecules and not as ethanoic ions and hydrogen ions. 
with the hydrochloric acid, if you notice, I use a, a double edged arrow here and not like an equilibrium reaction. The reason for that, hydrochloric acid being a strong acid, right? Let's say it's um, technically, it is an equilibrium reaction, right? Because the chloride ion can combine with AC, with the hydrogen ion to form HCl. But with HCl being a strong acid, once it once you form back HCl, it dissociates immediately and gives you back H plus and Cl minus. So it's basically the equilibrium is essentially just to the right. Whereas for this one, we will do Where do you think the equilibrium is for this reaction? To the right or to the left? To the left, sir? Just a second. Um, right, it is to the left. Let me explain why. So remember, this is supposed to ionize into this, right? But because this is a weak acid, it is staying as the molecule. So the forward reaction is not stable. It's this one. So most of the, in this solution, most of what you have is the molecule. So the equilibrium favors the, the left hand side. With a strong acid, it favors the right hand side. All right. So I just wanted to know when you say it fully ionizes, it's not in terms of just writing, it's not like looking at the equation and say this is partial and this is full. We are talking about the percentage of the molecules that actually ionize. So in solution, all of the HCl molecule will ionize. And so you will have a lot of hydrogen ions in solution. Whereas for a weak acid, only a few of the only a few of the molecules will ionize. So you will have a lower concentration of H plus. And remember, for it to be acidic, it has to have a lot of H plus ions. So when you only have a few H plus ions it's not going to be a very acidic solution. So are we clear on this? Not sure. So you can repeat the parts about like the equilibrium being on the left and being on the right. All right, so remember, so the ethanoic acid molecule, right? When it is in solution, So the water will accept a hydrogen ion from the acid, right? And so you get CH3COO minus plus the hydroxonium ion, right? Now, if this acid was a strong acid, all of the molecules present in this solution would be dissociating to form the ion. However, because it's a weak acid, most of the molecules are going to stay intact. It is not dissociating. So if it is not dissociating, it is staying as the molecule intact, right? That means your equilibrium is favoring this side because the forward reaction is not really taking place. Is it any clearer? So, it could, so because this is not dissociating, essentially the equilibrium is to this side because nothing is 
opinion in the forward direction. Let me put back the H plus one. Maybe you can see it better. So with this one, right? With the HCL one, the equilibrium would be, let me just set it up like an equilibrium reaction. For this one, because it is completely dis dissociating, it is forming H plus and CL minus, right? So all of these are being converted to this. So the forward reaction is favored because even if these two com combine and give a HCL, this is going to dissociate back to give you H plus and CL minus. So we say for this one, the equilibrium would favor the right hand side because the molecules keep dissociating to give you these products here. So whatever is being produced then in a greater amount, that is this, that is the side that we say the equilibrium is favoring. So whichever is being produced in a greater amount, that is what equilibrium is favoring. So these are being produced in a greater amount than we are actually reforming re the HCL. So the equilibrium favors the right hand side. However, if this is not dissociating, it means that we are going to have a lot of these and a few of these. So wherever you have a lot, that is where equilibrium favors, all right? So equilibrium, it favors the left hand side for the weak acid because the molecule is not dissociating. So you will have a lot of the molecule in solution for weak acids. Is it any clearer, the person that asked? Yes, sir. All right. Yeah. And so for strong acid, we don't normally use a double bending arrow, as in the two arrows, right? We don't normally move one. Because as we said, it completely dissociates. So it's not really a forward and reverse reaction. All right. Now here, we you see I have the hydroxonium ion. We don't, in solution, we don't really have H plus ions, all right? Whenever you see use H plus, it's actually the hydroxonium ion. But to simplify it, we just use H plus, all right? And for this equation, we don't often use H2O inside of it. All right, so the typical equation if we look like this one. So this, all I have to do is write the acid dissociating into the, it's ion and giving up the hydrogen ion. But this is what actually happens up here. The acid reacts with water, the water accepts the proton to give you the hydroxonium ion and the ethanoid ion, all right? I just wanted to explain that. One more thing before we get to the calculations. When you look at the acid molecule here, right? When ethanoic acid or any organic acid, because your organic acid, as you know from organic chemistry, this is the carboxyl functional group, right? COOH. So every time your organic acid dissociates, you get one hydrogen ion and one of this ion here. That means these two are produced in the same amount, all right? And I'm telling you this because when we're going to use certain formulas, we won't have to include this ion. And the reason we're not going to include it is because the hydrogen ions and this ion is equal. So we don't need to include both of them. Once they are equal, we are going to only use the hydrogen ion. 
But as we work the question, it will be, become clearer. All right. So with that said, we're going to go back now to the formulas. So we know that to calculate the pH of a solution, it's negative log the concentration of the hydrogen ion. There are a few things that we will have to know how to do. If you are given the pH, how do you get hydrogen ion? All right, so I'm just going to give you a list of formulas and when to use them. No, we know that a strong acid completely dissociates in water or in solution as I just showed, right? That means if you have a solution of HCl and the concentration, let us say, is 0 0.5 moles per dm cube, what do you think the concentration of hydrogen ion is? If this is a strong acid, this concentration is 0 0.5. What do you think the concentration of the hydrogen ion is? It's not something to calculate. So remember, strong acids, let me go right again. A strong acid completely dissociates in solution. This means if you have 10 molecules of HCl, right? All of them will dissociate and you will end up with 10 H plus 10 Cl minus, right? That is what complete dissociation means. You would only have the hydrogen ion and the chloride ions. So what this is saying, the hydrogen ion concentration and the acid concentration, once it's a strong acid, the hydrogen ion concentration, it is equal to the acid concentration. So in this example, if the concentration of HCl is 0 0.5 moles per dm cube, what is the concentration of the H plus? 0 0.5. Right, that is correct. So, for, a, for, strong, for strong acids, the concentration of the hydrogen ion is the same as the concentration of the acid. So what would the pH of this solution be? 0 0.3. Right, so the pH would be equal to negative log 0. 5, and I got 0 0.3. Yes, sir. All right. So for strong acids, it's straight forward. Whatever the concentration of the acid is, that's the concentration of your hydrogen ion. All right. And that would be it. And that's it for strong acid. Let's look now at weak acids. I didn't get to compose the past paper, but I'm going to do it. I'm going to work it. And you can try to homework, and we will be on Tuesday. I'm not sure of the time as it. No. All right, now for a weak acid, let me put back ethanoic acid on the board. So this is an equilibrium 
reaction and for an equilibrium reaction, you will have an equilibrium constant. Now this is showing the dissociation of an acid. So the constant for this reaction, the equilibrium constant, we call it the acid dissociation constant. Now, in any equilibrium reaction, when you are finding the equilibrium, the equilibrium constant, what do we normally do? So the equilibrium constant is equal to what? It's it's normal. It's normal. What? Products over no, reaction. Product over product reactions. Over reactions. Right, that is correct. So it would be the ethanoic ion times the hydrogen ion divided by the acid. Now remember, I just said that when this is seen, you will get one of this and one of this, right? So the concentration of both of these are equal. So if they are equal, we can just go ahead and put H plus squared. Right? Just remember, so if you have A, A times A, that is A squared, right? So if both of these are equal, then what you are basically saying, it's H times H, all right? Since as both of them are equal, then it's H times H. So it's H plus squared. Is that clear? Sir, can you say that again, please? All right. So you can do it, all right, so we would normally Write it like this, right? Products over the reactants. But if these two are equal, right? Let me just put in some numbers, seconds, right? Let us say the concentration of these two is two, all right? Two times two is how much? Four. Four. And two squared is how much? Four. Right. So if I put H plus squared, right? And the H plus concentration is two. Two squared would give me four, right? Yes, sir. And two times two, I would still end up with four. Yes, sir. So because the concentration of the ethanoic ion and the hydrogen ion are equal, I don't have to include the ion itself in the formula. I can just use H plus and square it. Sir, we could put it if we want to, though. Please repeat. If we want to put it, can we? No, the reason why you're not going to put it is because sometimes in some equations, you won't be given the concentration of these. So when you want to when you want to find it, so let me show you what will happen, right? So this formula, Ka is equal to H plus squared. All right, if you're having problem with it, right? Just remember, I can write it like this. So you put the CH3COO minus and the H plus, all right? But just remember that if these two are equal, then you're basically, this is the same, if this is the same as this, right? That means this could be H plus as well. If they are the same, this is H plus as well, then, right? So how when it's equal? Please repeat. So how you know it is equal? How? No, man, for any weak acid, 
So it's for weak acid, remember? And look at this. Remember your weak acid and it's the organic acid, right? It has this functional group. So every time this, this is where the, this is where you are going to lose the hydrogen from, not here. So it is this hydrogen that is being given up. So you will always just get one hydrogen ion and the negative ion. So that is why these two, the amount of these two in solution will always be equal. So this formula here is for weak acids. And remember we said weak acids partially dissociate in solution. And for this, anytime it dissociates, you are getting one hydrogen ion and one of the negative ion of the acid. So they are always produced in the same amount. So if the concentration of this is two, the concentration of the hydrogen ion is also two. So we don't use these two in the equation. We just simply put H plus squared. And the reason we do that, right? Let us say you are not given the hydrogen ion concentration, which can happen. You will be given, you will be given Ka and you will be given the concentration of the acid and you will have to find the hydrogen ion concentration. So to find it, so these are the equations that you must know. This is the first one. So if you want to find Ka, just put A plus squared over this. If the question, if the question gives you the concentration of the hydrogen ion, all right, and this one as well, which I never seen a question like that, right? They will normally give you the pH, and you have to use pH to find the concentration of the hydrogen ions. So what I'm doing is showing you how to apply each formula and under the different circumstances. So the main formula is this one. Ka is H plus squared divided by the concentration of the acid. Now, in some cases, you will need to find the concentration of the hydrogen ion and you will be given Ka on the concentration of the acid. And so you will have to transpose this formula to get the concentration of the hydrogen ion. And if you're going to transpose it, you start by doing a simple cross multiplication, right? And so H plus square becomes Ka times the concentration of the acid. Now, how do we get the, this is H plus square, right? What would we have to do to get it as H plus? Square root. Square root. Right. So make a note of this. If you are given Ka and the concentration of the acid and you need to find hydrogen ion, this is what you will do, all right? So this is how you find the concentration of the hydrogen ion when you are given Ka and the concentration of the acid. This is what you will do. Uh, excuse me, sir, but where will you upload this recording after you're done? Where? 
Yes, sir. Will you upload this recording after you're done? Just a second. On my YouTube channel, uh, it's Mr. Here's Chemistry, or someone can just type it in the chat. Mr. Here's Chemistry Lecture Series. And it says on YouTube, Mr. Here's Chemistry Lecture Series. All right, so there are two formulas on the board, but this one is basically a transfer, a transposition of the main one. So the first one we're doing is Ka is H plus squared over the concentration of the acid. And remember these calculations is when we are dealing with weak acids because weak acids, that is when we get the equilibrium reaction, not with strong acids. As I told you before, strong acids, they dissociate completely. So there's no really, there's no really any to and fro reaction taking place. But we have that with the weak acid. All right. And so the first one we do is the equilibrium constant, which is the acid dissociation constant. All right, so just make a note of these two. All right, so I'm going, I'm going to put some heading as calculations and show you how to use the different formulas. So in some questions, right, you will be given a pH and you will be asked to find Ka, all right? So I'm just putting it as a heading Ka from pH. So what will you do when you are given the pH and box to find Ka. So you're going to have to find the concentration of the hydrogen ion. That is correct. And how would we do that? So we're going to do a shift log and we're right. going to put in the pH value. Right. So if you want to find Ka from pH, you are going to need to find the hydrogen ion concentration first. And to do that, on the paper, if you are doing the calculation, you are going to write antilog negative pH. But on the calculator, well, depending on the calculator, you have, right? So, but if you have shift, you will press the shift button. So shift log, let's say the pH is three, it will be shift log negative three, all right? So this is how you will get the hydrogen ion concentration. It's the antilog of the pH, but on the calculator, you will press shift log, all right? Now on the working note, put antilog and not shift, all right? So I'm just making a real thing. So to get the antilog and the calculator, the first shift. So if you want to find Ka from pH, the first thing you'll need to do is convert the pH into the hydrogen ion concentration. And this is how you will do it. Now, once you have the hydrogen ion concentration, then you will do the Ka is equal to H plus squared divided by the concentration of whichever acid you were given. So to get Ka from pH, it's two simple calculations. Just get the hydrogen ion concentration and you put it into this equation.
All right, so after this one, you can also know we ask to find pH from Ka. Excuse me, sir, can you like um like give a detailed can you give an example of us using the binding Ka from pH in action, please? Yes, uh, no, I'm going to I have examples I'm going to work. I'm just giving up each of them first. Then work them. Yeah, right? okay, sir. Yeah, man. All right, so if you want pH from Ka, pH is negative log the concentration of the hydrogen ion. Now in the question, you are not going to be given the hydrogen ion concentration. You will be given Ka and the concentration of the acid. So in the question, you will be given Ka and the concentration of the acid. That is what you will be given. And then you will be asked to find the pH. And remember, this is where now you do the transposing. So you would have said Ka is equal to H plus squared divided by the concentration of the acid, right? And of course, we we'll do the transposing, and we will get the concentration of the hydrogen ion is equal to the square root of Ka times the concentration of the acid. And once you get the concentration of the hydrogen ion, you can go ahead and take the log of it. So when you get the question, if you see our given Ka and the concentration of the acid and ask to find pH, you have to transpose this formula to get the hydrogen ion concentration. Okay. Then you then you work out the love of it. All right, so we have two more formulas, and as the question comes, I'm going to show you how to use it. So pH plus pOH is equal to 14, all right? pH plus pOH is equal to 14. And KW is the hydroxide ion concentration and the H plus ion concentration. All right, so now we're going to work a series of questions involving the equations that I've just put on the board so we can see when to use each of them.
So that is the first one. All right, so they are asking us to find pH. So we know that pH is equal to negative log, the concentration of the hydrogen ion. So what do we need? We need the hydrogen ion, right? So how can we find the hydrogen ion? What are we given in the question? That we can use the ethanoic acid. The ethanoic acid, what would we do with it? How would we use it to find the concentration of So hydrogen? we'd have to show the dissociation of it. All right, let me see. All right, so that's the dissociation. So what are you, so are you saying that it would also be 0 0.05? All right. Yes, sir. All right, so remember, once every carboxylic acid or every organic acid is a weak acid, right? And remember, only strong acids, the concentration of the H plus and the acid is the same. So the fact that this is a weak acid, the concentration of the hydrogen ion is not the same as it. All right. So look what happens. Are right, based on the formulas I just gave, right? One of them applies to this question. So you are asked to find the pH. And what are you given? So you want pH, and which two things are you given in the question? All right, so you are given Ka and the concentration of the acid. So can we use Ka and the concentration of the acid to find H plus? Let us check. So remember Ka, is equal to what? H plus squared divided by the concentration. In this case, it would be CH3COOH. So can we use this formula and get the concentration of the hydrogen ion? Yes, sir. Right. Yes, sir. So we know that after we do our transposing H plus, would be equal to the square root of what? The ethanoic acid. Of the K8, K8. That is correct. So it would be 1.74 times 10 to the minus 5 times 0 0.05. Oh, when you're doing this calculation, please remember, after you get the answer, Remember to square root it because sometimes you might have it. So you will just multiply it and then write it as your answer. So just remember when you calculate it, take the square root of it as well. And you should get the answer to be 9.33. All right, so when you multiply them, you will put the button 8.7 times 10 to the minus seven. And when you square root that, you would get 9.33 times 10 to the minus four. So that is the concentration of the H plus ion. And so we can just go ahead now and plug it into the formula. All right, 
All right, so TH is equal to negative log 9.33 times 10 to the minus four. Someone work it and tell me what to get. Three point zero three. Right, that is correct. Three point zero three. All right. So whenever you if you get the question and you see and you see that you are given the Ka and the concentration of the acid, this is how you will be. This is how you will work it out. And once you see Ka, it's a weak acid. That means you will have to calculate the hydrogen ion concentration. If it was a strong acid, you wouldn't have an equilibrium constant. So once they give a Ka, that is an indication that it is a weak acid. All right. So that is how you do that one. So next one now. Uh, so I got a different answer. How much I got? Um, sir, it's it's right. around in the. Tell me what I got from here. So let me see what I did. Did you get the eight point seven? Sir, I guess um you you must like um put a bracket in it when you put it in your calculator. Because if you don't put the bracket in with the square root in the calculator, you get a different answer. All right, so when you depend to be on this safe side, right? Don't put everything in the calculator at once. I mean, some calculator it's okay, but with others it might show a fair answer. So if you work out this, I think it's eight point seven. So what's in the day? You put this. And then press the square root sign. No, sir. Let's put this. I just put this times this and then press square root and equal. All right, sir. I had uh, in the back it, it I got 2.2.9 when I when I squared my squared the last part 8.7 times 10 to negative 7. The reason why I what I was talking about was um negative log 9.33 times 10 to negative 4. I got a different answer for that. How much of that? It's supposed to be cheaper and zero cheap, but how much of that? Um, um, from my answer, I got uh, two two hundred thousand. 13,796, it's weird, I'm not going to sum it up. You press negative log? Yes. Well, no, shift log, then... Oh, no, no, I'm... no, don't press shift log. When you press shift log, shift log, shift log is for the pH. So if we told you that the pH is five or whatever, that is when you will shift log. So only the pH, if you want the hydrogen ion from the pH, that is when you will shift log. Here, you just press, just press the log, all right? So you have the hydrogen ion concentration, so it's just negative log, the hydrogen ion concentration, all right? So just check now, negative log, 9.33 times 10 to the minus 4. Um, sir, it's a negative um, 10, I would say, or negative 9.6. Right. Well, 9.6? Yes, negative 
Can I answer? Yes, sir. <laughs> no, man, what a great. Give me a second. Three point zero three. The first negative log. Negative log. Nine point three three times ten to the minus four. Maybe it's not pressing the ESP to raise the power. Maybe it's not. Look on the calculator. Where of times ten? Look if you have an EXP button on your calculator. First, 9.33 EXP, negative four. Yeah, probably doing something. Yeah, probably that's where we can mistake. Um, he's not bracketing the 9.33 times into the minus four. That's why he's getting that answer. You don't have to bracket it. You don't have to bracket it. Oh, yeah, because I tried it without the bracket and I got the same 9.6 that he got, but I just did it with the bracket and I got the 3.03. .03. I'm not sure what, what you're doing now. So in this one, they give, they tell you that the pH of this solution, so they give you the concentration and they give you the pH and they are asking you to find Ka. So is it 0 0.01? Yes. Let me... uh, so it's, uh, your screen's not showing. It's not showing? No, sir. Anybody else having that problem? All right, the problem. No, it's showing. It's good now. It's good now. All right. Tell him to clean the chat, sir. Sir, can you read it out loud, please? Because I'm having a hard time seeing it too. Sure. So it says the pH of a 0 0.01 moles per dm cube. The pH of a 0 0.01 moles per dm cube methanoic, methanoic acid solution is 2.9. So the pH of a 0 0.01 moles per dm cube methanoic acid solution is 2.9. Deduce the value of Ka. So I will just give you a little chance to try it.
All right, I see someone with an answer. All right, let us see now. All right, so they gave us pH and they gave us the concentration of the acid and we want to find Ka. So Ka, as we know, is H plus squared divided by the concentration in this case of methanoic acid. Now, how did you get the concentration of the H plus ion? Anybody want to share how they got it? Right. So we have to. So in this one, we are getting the hydrogen ion concentration from the pH, and so to do that, it's the antilog negative pH, which means that on your calculator, you would press shift log, and what did you get for your answer? So antilog negative 2.9, what did you get for this answer? 1.259. Times ten to the negative three. Right, let me see if that is what I have. Two five nine two six. Right, you're sure. Right, so that is correct. So after you got the hydrogen ion concentration, what did you do afterwards? Find the K. Look, that the K is formula. Yeah. Right, so Ka is equal to, let's just say 1.26 times 10 to the minus 3, you square it and divide it by 0 0.01. What was your answer? 1.5876 times 10 to the minus 4. All right. So that would be, if you're going to put the 1.59 times 10 to the minus 4, and moles per BMQ. That is correct. All right. So you are seeing now when you are given the different information, how to use the different formulas. All right. So let's go again.
Right. This one would work. This type of question would be if it's a strong base like NaOH. So let me just put NaOH. I'm going to show you how to work. So with acids, with acids, we would use pH, but with bases, it's POH. So POH is negative log the concentration of the hydroxide ion. So POH is equal to negative log. 0.0250. And we should get for our answer. We should get 1.6. Try and tell me if you want to get that. Yes, sir. All right. No, the question is asking for pH, right? So they give you the concentration of a basic solution and it's asking you for pH, not pOH. If it was pOH, it would simply be negative log concentration of this and it ends here. So remember this formula now, pH plus pOH is equal to 14, right? So if pH plus pH is equal to 14, what is pH equal to? Seven. No, in terms of transposing the formula. So the, the 14 minus 1.6. Right. 14 minus pOH, correct, which is the 1.6. So this is the case where you use pH and pOH. They give you the concentration of the hydroxide ion and ask you to find pH. So you find pOH first, and then you will drop it into this formula. Mm -hmm. And so the pH of this solution is 12.4. Also, told you that. So the hydrogen ion, hydroxide ion. So this is the next way of working it. Is equal to K double right? Here we have the hydroxide ion concentration. If we want pH, what we need to find first is the hydrogen ion concentration. So what would the hydrogen ion concentration equal to? How do you transpose this? So you'd work it from the pH? No, no, as in, no this formula here, how would you transpose it? So I would have to over um All right, so the hydroxide ion concentration. So it will be KW divided by the hydroxide ion concentration. And KW is 1 times 10 to the minus 14. And the OH concentration is 0 0.025. And you would have gotten 4 times 10 to the minus 3. 
So I'm showing you two ways of working it. So if you are given the concentration of the hydroxide ion, you can use either of these methods. The hydrogen ion times the hydroxide ion is equal to KW, which is the ionization constant of water. So you just transpose it for the hydrogen ion. And when you get the answer, you would just say pH, pH is equal to negative log four times 10 to the minus three, and you would end up with, you can try it for yourself, you would end up with 12.4. What did I call it? Okay. John said it doesn't hurt. You can try it and see. So whichever method you prefer, you can use it. Because present for two weeks Hold on, hold on. Yes, K the W is the is the ionization constant for water. Is everyone getting back the answer? I thought two point three when I tried it that way. How much I got? No, it's 13. Sorry, it's not true. Sorry, it's not true. It's 13. Negative 13. Sorry about that. Yeah, try it now. Yes, sir, it worked. I got 12.4. Yeah. So, whichever way you prefer, you can use it. All right, so let's know. So that was the acid. Let's look at KB now. So just like with this strong acid, the concentration of the hydrogen ion is equal to the concentration of the acid. We have a strong base. Come on, Mike is. Right, just like with the acid, with the strong acid, where the concentration of the hydrogen ion is equal to the concentration of the acid. Whenever you have a strong base, the concentration of the hydroxide ion is the same as the base. So sodium hydroxide is a strong base. So if you want the pOH of it, it's just negative log the concentration of the base, all right? But however, when we have a weak base, then and we are going to have an equilibrium reaction again. And so we are going to have an equilibrium constant. So since it's a base we are dealing with, we are going to call it the base dissociation constant, all right? So we're going to do some calculations now for KB. So KA is with weak acid, KB is for weak base. One second.
Now for the base dissociation constant, it's just like with the weak acid. So Kb would be equal to the hydroxide ion squared divided by the concentration of the base, which is ethyl amine. And that is the formula. All right, so I'm just going to see if you can figure it out. So I'm going to give you about three minutes to try it on your own, and then I will work it. Excuse me, sir, can you read this one out loud as well? Sure. Calculate the pH. Calculate the pH of a 0 0.01 moles per dm cube solution of ethyl amine. Calculate the pH of a 0 0.01 moles per dm cube solution of ethyl amine. And the Kb for ethyl amine is 6.5 times 10 to the negative three. 6.5 times 10 to the negative three. Thank you, sir. You're welcome.
I'm in. Someone asking a question. You're checking the mirror. Um, your mic is on. Does anybody have an answer as yet? Would like to share? Eleven point nine. Eleven point nine one. Eleven point nine one. Let me check. All right, I have eleven point four one. But let us see. All right. So they are asking us to find the pH of point zero one moles per m q and K B is six point five. All right. And again, with this equation. So, what's the first thing that you need for KB? What's the first calculation? Transport for OH. All right, transport for OH. And so, just like with the H plus squared, the hydroxide ion would be equal to the square root of KB times the concentration of ethylamine. Right, and that will be equal to the square root of 6.5 times 10 to the minus three times 0 0.01. What did you get for your answer? 8.062 times 10 to negative 3. 8.062 times 10 to negative 3. And then the square root that, how much of that? Me, sorry, it was after I square rooted everything in the second line. I got 8.6. Hold on. Where's my calculation? And so 6.5, x4, negative 3, times point uh, So I got the same, but I got time, uh, time 10 to the 4, negative 4. Can you give me a second? Just double check. Yeah, eight yes, eight point zero six times ten to the minus three. Right. So after this now, this is the hydroxide ion, right? Concentration. Yes, sir. No. So what to do after that? I calculated the POH. That is good, all right. And so POH is negative log 8.062 and 10 to the minus three. And what was your answer? 2.094. Zero nine four times. I just took a zero nine. Just two point zero nine four, sir. All right. So if that is POH, what did we do after that? You use the formula P eight plus POH equal fourteen. P eight plus POH equal fourteen. So PH is equal to. 14 minus 2.09. Right. 
that would be equal to 11.9 one remember here when you got the I job side I am concentration here if you want to use kW equal h plus if you want to use the formula kW equal h plus times OH minus, you can go ahead and use it, right? Because all you would do is transpose for h plus. And once you get the answer, you will take the log of it, all right? But this person may use this formula, which is also correct, all right? So in this question, we have gotten KB and we calculated the pH, all right? Now, before, it's now almost seven, all right? When I put, I'm going to set the cost paper and send it out, right? I'm going to look for questions on pH so you can practice and when we meet, we can work them out. But I want to touch on buffers. All right, so for the rest of the class, let us just touch on buffers. All right, so does anybody know what is a buffer? Um, basically, what I classify a buffer as a type of substance that is used to um, prevent, uh, prevent a, pH, a pH scale level from changing. Right, so any solution, that when you try to change the pH of it, it is going to resist the change in that pH. So if you have a solution, right? Let's say a pH of five. What would you do to a solution that would cause the pH to change? What would you add to it that can change the pH? Salt acid, Acid, hmm? acid or base, sorry. Acid or base. Right, acid, acid or base, that is correct. So when you, add a, when you have a buffer and you add acid or base, so if you have, if you add acid to a buffer, then or if you add acid to a solution, then that solution is supposed to become acidic. And so the pH will decrease. However, if you add base to the solution, the pH is supposed to increase. However, if it's a buffer, then the solution will have species present in it to neutralize any acid or any base that is added to it. All right, so let us look at our buffer works to prevent an increase or a decrease in pH, all right? And we have two types of buffer. What are the two types? Acidic and basic. That is correct. And how do we prepare an acid buffer? You prepare an acid buffer by using a weak acid and the salt of the weak acid. That is correct. And what is the most common example at this level? A weak acid or an acidic buffer? Ethanoic. That is correct. And what is the salt? Sodium ethanoate. Right. So we make a so we make an acid buffer by using a weak acid and a base, sorry, a weak acid and one of these color. And for a basic buffer, we use a weak base and one of these color. So let us look at the acid buffer first. Someone, Mike is on. All right, thanks for muting. So it's made from a weak acid 
and it's a uh, right, so example now is ethanoic acid and sodium ethanoid. So let us see what happens. So we have ethanoic acid. That is when it dissociates. And if we add, when we have a solution, right, of a salt, so if we say we have sodium ethanoate, right, so C H E C O O N A, this is sodium ethanoate. When we say we have a solution of it, right, it is not, it is not intact. Cell, cell don't actually have C H E C O O N A. If it's a solution, even though the formula, right, C H E C O O M A, what you will have is a lot of C H E C O O minus ions and sodium ions. Because remember, ionic compounds dissolve in water. And when they dissolve, that means the negative ion is separated from the positive ion. So in your buffer, you will have, let me just take a note of it. Remember, this is a weak acid, right? And remember we said weak acids, they don't dissociate. And when we say they don't di dissociate are, when we say they partially dissociate, we mean a few of the total molecules present will actually dissociate. So what you will have inside of the buffer, you will have a lot of you will have a lot of unionized acid molecules. So because it's a weak acid, you will have a lot of its molecules present. You will have a lot of the ions present, but from the salt. All right, so this ion will have a lot of the ethanoid ion. From this one. Uh, right. Excuse me, sir. Uh, what did you say? Did you say the ionic compound is, sol is soluble in water? Well, this one, not every ionic compound, but for this case, which is sodium ethanoid, no, what I was saying, when we say the, when you have a solution with an ionic compound, you have to bear in mind that the negative ions are separated from the positive ion. So when we have a solution of sodium ethanoid, right? So this is the formula. This is the formula for sodium ether, know it. But when we say we have a solution of it, the sodium ion is not attached to it because if it dissolves, the negative ion is separated from the positive ion. So you are going to have the ethanoid ion and the sodium ion if you have a solution. This is the actual reality of the situation. So in your buffer, you will have ethanoid ion, but most of it is from the salt. It's not from the actual acid, because remember the acid is a weak acid, which means that it, most of the molecules will stay as the molecule and not dissociate into the ion, all right? So that is your buffer. The acid molecule, a few hydrogen ions, not a lot, because remember the hydrogen ion 
is coming from the weak acid. So you only you will not have a lot of hydrogen ion present. All right. But you will have a lot of the ethanoic ion because you added a salt. So your buffer, it must have something that is going to remove hydrogen ions. So if you add acid to this, to this buffer here, it must have ions present that can remove the hydrogen ion. And if you add base to it, it must have something there to remove the base. All right. So, so could you repeat this please? Uh, which part exactly? All right. So when you have the buffer, right? Remember the buffer is supposed to resist change in pH when you add acid or a base, right? So if it is going to resist the change, right? So we now understand. All right. So let me go again. You have your buffer. By definition, your buffer solution should stay at a particular pH. Now, you have acidic solutions and you have basic solutions. Water is supposed to be neutral. So just imagine you have a container of, of water and the pH of the water is seven. If you pour hydrochloric acid in that water, do you think the pH is going to be seven? You no, said the pH is neutral, so it wouldn't change. So it would still be seven since it wouldn't change at all. No, well, no, definitely. If you of the water, the pH right, would decrease. It would so yeah. The person that had said no. So the question was: Are the scenario? You have a bottle of water. Let us say the pH is neutral, seven. But then you go ahead and pour hydrochloric acid in the water. Would the pH stay at seven? No, it would decrease if it is more acidic. No. Exactly. Be right. Because when you add the acid, you would now increase the hydrogen ion concentration. Likewise, if you go ahead of the next bottle of water, right? pH of seven. If you go ahead and pour base in it, would the pH stay at seven? No, sir. No, it would increase. No, sir. Right. right. Good. So let us compare these two solutions to a buffer solution. Now, the reason why the pH would decrease when you add the acid to it is because when you add the acid, you are increasing the concentration of the hydrogen ion. So there's nothing in present in the water to reduce the amount of hydrogen ion. So basically convert the hydrogen ion to a molecule and there's nothing to convert the hydroxide ion to a neutral molecule. So that is why the pH is going to change for a regular solution. Now your buffer solution is not like a regular solution. And the reason for that is it will contain ions that will combine with your hydrogen ions. So if you add hydrogen ions to your buffer, Ions are going to be there when you add hydrogen ions. And if you add hydroxide ions, something is going to be there to remove them. That is why your buffer will not, you will not see a sharp increase in the pH. There will actually be a slight increase, right? But not any sharp increase. So let us look back at this example to explain how and our buffer actually works. So the buffer we are looking at is the acid, the ethanoic acid buffer, right? And remember the buffer is weak acid 
and the salt. Remember now, the acid, it partially dissociates, right? So you will have a few ethanoid ion and a few hydrogen ions coming from the acid itself. But remember, you also have a salt in it. The salt on the other hand, unlike the weak acid, the salt will completely dissociate. And that is why you will have a lot of ethanoid ion. So most of the ethanoid ion is not from the acid, but from the salt. So the purpose of this model, let us look, is that the buffers, the buffers, give me a second, let me just read the question. Right. Uh, yes, so uh, I read too much comments a while ago. Give me a second. Let me read the last one. Is that the post for a solution of the salt? Mm. All right, so the buffer solution is made with the acid and this salt, right? But what I'm showing you, this that I put here, the ethanoid ion and the sodium ion, which I put on the left and the right hand side. Your salt will dissociate, right? To give you the ethanoid ion. The ethanoid ion is a product of dissociation of both the acid and the salt. So your buffer includes acid and the salt to answer the person question, right? Now, the main equation of interest is this one, the ethanoid ion and the hydrogen ion. The sodium is not of importance. Now, the question we need to answer, how will this resist the change when you add hydrogen ion or hydroxide ion? So remember, a buffer, must have something present to remove H plus as well as OH minus. So let us look at the hydrogen ion first. Uh, so you said that the anoid, anoid ion is resu result from salt dissociation as, as well as of acid what? All right, so in the buffer, the ethanoid ion, of two sources, the acid and the salt. But the acid is a weak acid. So only a few of the ethanoid ion comes from the acid. Most of it comes from the salt, right? So two sources, the salt and the acid, but most of it comes from the salt. And the reason for that, the salt will completely dissociate. All of the ions, will, all of the salt present, the molecules will break up into ethanoid ion and sodium ion. So if this is your buffer, right, at the moment, when you add hydrogen ion, a positive ion, what is there that can react with the hydrogen ion? The ethanoid ion. Ethanoid ion. Right. So let us say we add some hydrogen ions. Right. Remember, we have a lot of ethanoid ions, right? So if you add hydrogen ions, then these can combine with the hydrogen ions, right? To produce what? What would they? Ethanoid acid. Ethanoid acid. That is correct. 
And so that is how we would lose up or we would get rid of the hydrogen ions, right? However, remember it's an equilibrium reaction. So when you pick up the hydrogen ions to form this molecule, remember a few of them will actually dissociate to produce back hydrogen ions, but not a lot because it's a weak acid. So your buffer is not that it is going to stay at exactly the same pH. That is why I say it will not stay exactly the same. It will change slightly, but not a lot, all right? And as someone pointed out in the chat, with our buffers, we are not adding an excess of acid or base, right? A small amount, because remember, you have to get rid of them. So if you add it in excess, the buffer will not be able to counter the effect of it if you add it in excess, all right? So just remember when you add your H plus ions, it will combine with the ethanoid ion. That is how we are using up the hydrogen ions that we add. Is that clear? The reason why your buffer will not experience a sharp increase in pH when you add hydrogen ions to it. You see, if these hydrogen ions, could you please do with the base? Yes, I'm going to do basic as well. So the reason why this buffer is not going to the reason why this is not going to result in a sharp increase in the pH is because a negative ion is there to remove these. So remember, the reason for something being acidic is hydrogen ion. So if hydrogen ion is present, you will have an acidic solution. If it is absent, the solution is not going to be acidic. So if you have a buffer, right, solution at pH five, and you add hydrogen ions into that solution, and they are allowed to stay in the solution, the pH is going to decrease because the presence of the hydrogen ion causes the solution to become acidic. Now for buffers, the reason why it is not going to become more acidic because it's an acidic buffer. The reason why it is not going to become more acidic is because when you add the hydrogen ion, you have a next ion there that is going to get rid of it. So ethanoid ions, let me just erase this thing in right here and do this. You have to remember that you don't have one ethanoid ion, you have a lot of them. Good. So, is it that they give me a second? So is it that the ethanoic acid make it less acidic and more basic? No man, all right, so look, your buffer is at a set pH, right? Let us say it is at a pH of five. When you add hydrogen ions to it, like we have down here, these hydrogen ions are going to, if this was a regular solution, right? The presence of the hydrogen ion will cause the pH of this solution to drop. So what is going to cause the pH to change is either hydrogen ions being added or hydroxide ions. 
but we are, we are focusing on the hydrogen ions first. So we have a buffer, the pH is five. Good, everything is okay. However, you are going to interfere with the buffer. And so you add a small amount of hydrogen ions to it. That is going to cause, or uh, it should cause the pH to decrease. But before that, before that can get to happen, your ethanoid ions are going to combine with them. And you'll get back ethanoid acid molecules. And as you can see, do we have hydrogen ions anymore? Are there any other hydrogen ions present? All of them have combined, exactly. All of them have combined with the ethanoid ion, and so we get back the ethanoic acid molecule, which is on the left-hand side. So that is why we would say the equilibrium is shifting to the left. So, and the reason why we say shift to the left, the ethanoic acid molecule is a reactant. It is on the left hand side. So, when the hydrogen ions combine with the ethanoic ion, we get the reverse reaction taking place. All right. And so, this is why. When you add the hydrogen ions to this buffer, the pH will not change because ethanoic ions are present to remove the H plus ions. Is that any clearer? Mm -hmm. So that's what happens, all right? So just remember buffer, they must have something to get rid of the hydrogen ions. And it, in this case, it is the ethanoid ion. You are welcome. Now let us look at the hydroxide ion. It works in the same principle. So let me just erase these and put them up. All right. Well, we won't need these anymore for the explanation. What I'm going to do now is put more of our hydrogen ions. So remember, we don't have just one molecule of these, right? Sorry. So not to cause any confusion. Mm -hmm. Right. So, some of these are from the acid as well as this salt. But the hydrogen ions, they are only from the acid. Now, if you add hydroxide ions, if you add hydroxide ions, what is present, what is present in the Buffer that can remove hydroxide ions. Hydrogen ion. Hydrogen ions, correct. So when you add hydroxide ions, they are supposed to cause the pH to increase. But the pH will only increase if they were allowed to stay in solution. Now about the query of no, all I need to say, right? So the question is, what will happen to this buffer when you add hydrogen ions to it? All you need to say, the ethanoid ion will combine with the hydrogen ions to form back the ethanoic acid molecule. 
the point about equilibrium, because you are because you are forming bulk, this molecule it is shifting to the left. So it's not really any, we're not going into details about equilibrium. All right. When you add hydrogen ions, they combine with the ethanoic ion to form ethanoic acid molecules. So it is shifting to the left because this product, the ethanoic acid molecule, is on the left hand side. So if you are forming it, the equilibrium is shifting to the left. All right. So that's all you need to say. Ethanoic ion combined with the hydrogen ion to form buck, the ethanoic acid molecule. That is how we get rid of the excess hydrogen ions. And if you add hydroxide ions, you said that they would combine with the hydrogen ions to form what? If hydroxide ions combine with okay. water. water. And so these now will use up the hydrogen ions. So let me just erase this. And so the hydroxide ions would not be allowed to stay in solution because they will combine with hydrogen ions to form water. Now this time we are using up hydrogen ions, right? So they are being removed as well because they are combining with hydrogen ions to form water. So if we are using up our hydrogen ions, which is a product of this equilibrium reaction, with the equilibrium be to the left, if we are using up hydrogen ions? No, no, to the right. Exactly. All right. All right. So the question is, what will happen when you add hydrogen ions to the buffer? And what will happen when you add hydroxide ions to the buffer? Hydrogen is a positive ion, so a negative ion must be present to remove it. And the only negative ion that you have is the ethanoid ion. All right, and that is what will happen. Hydrogen ion combined with the ethanoid ion to produce ethanoic acid. And when you add hydroxide ion O, which is a negative ion, there must be, no, it doesn't only apply to acid. I'm going to do basic, no. No, in the next class, I'm going to actually do buffers as it relates to the body, all right? But for this class, I'm just introducing to the first one, the basic acid buffer and basic buffer. But in general, the principle of a buffer solution, right? Buffer gives it pH, right? Resisting change in pH. That means you will have the solution at a set pH and hydrogen ions will come in, which will try to make the pH decrease. But something is going to be present in your buffer solution to resist that change. It is going to use up the hydrogen ion. Likewise, the hydroxide ion. So it doesn't matter which buffer you have, they work on the same principle to maintain pH. Because if you are maintaining pH, you cannot allow excess hydrogen ions to exist or excess hydroxide ions, all right? So that's the basic principle. So for next class, we will do the buffers for the body and some calculations, all right? So this was the acidic one. The other hydrogen ions, they combine with ethanoid ion, shift equilibrium to the left. The other hydroxide ions, they combine with the hydrogen ions to produce water 
because you are using the hydrogen ions, which is a part of the, the reaction, the equilibrium is going to shift to the right. Yeah. So that's for the acid one. Let's look at the basic one more. So the basic buffer, it will be made from a weak base and its own. Right, so a weak base, like ammonia, if you add ammonia to water, ammonia is a base, so you can accept a proton to form the ammonium ion and the hydroxide ion. A salt of ammonia is ammonium chloride. So this is the salt. Yeah. And the salt, of course, will completely dissociate. So you will get a lot of ammonium ions coming from the salt. Right. And of course, the chloride ion is not of importance to our buffer. So we are only focusing on the ammonium ion. So again, what is going to happen? We can add hydrogen ions and we can add, we can add hydrogen ions and we can add hydroxide ions. I just wanted to take a minute. I'm going to explain it, but let's take a minute and see. If you add hydrogen ions, what will happen? How will this, what is present to get rid of hydrogen ions and hydroxide ions? So, so just take a minute and see if you can answer it. All right, and then I will do it. So Right. Anybody who want to tell me when you add hydrogen ions, H plus. So hydrogen is positive. So do we have a negative ion present that can get rid of it? Hydrogen to ion. Give me a second, let me read that comment. Right, hydrogen two. Oh, you so mean that the hydrogen ion would combine with the hydroxide ion to form H2O. So for this buffer, the hydrogen ion would combine with the hydroxide ion again to form water. 
So to get rid of the hydrogen ion, we have the hydroxide ion present, which can combine with it to form water. If you add the hydroxide ion, if you look at this equation, how did we get the NH4 plus ion? Ammonia is a base, right? So we can accept a proton. <laughs> now, this time, the hydroxide ion can take a proton. And what would you end up with? If the hydroxide ion accepts a proton from the ammonium ion, what would you end up with? Ammonia. H2. Right. So for this one, when you add hydrogen ions, the hydrogen ions can combine with the OH ion to produce water. And the hydroxide ion can react with the ammonium ion to give ammonia. Now, what I want you to get from this, right? You realize that what is special about the buffer solution is that when you are either hydrogen ion or OH ion, there is always something there to, to, to remove them. And that is what is important because if you did not have anything to remove them, that is when the pH would go up if it's the hydroxide ion and go down if it's the hydrogen ion. But because something with an, an ion is always the present to remove the hydrogen ion or the hydroxide ion, then the pH is not allowed to change sharply. All right? And so those are what is happening in a buffer. Ions are present, that's when Hydrogen ions are added or OH ions are added. Something is there to remove them that does not allow the pH to change. Sorry, the example is when acid is added to the base. Please repeat. This example is when the acid is being added to the base. Oh, so this one is with ions. So this one is if you add acid and this one is if you add base to it. So this one is for when you add acid, and this is when you add a base. All right, before we close, I just want to do a quick calculation. So that when I send the questions, you at least have an idea of how to work it. All right, so I'm just going to put a question on the board and we'll work it and then we'll close. So the questions that will be today, they are just practice. The ones I'm going to send is past paper. So when we meet again, we will work those. But I want you to at least have a chance to attend them first. Where are you going to send the questions? I'm going to send the anomaly, send it in a group. And I guess anybody that sent you the link will send you it. However, you can send me an email to this email address, uh, Ramanko, give me a second. So you can send my email right there and whenever, when I make it, I will send it to you. All right, so the question is, reduce the pH of a buffer. Right, so if anyone is not seeing it clearly, the question is, did you use the pH of a buffer solution 
made by made by again 0 0.20 0 0.20 moles of sodium ethanoic made by adding 0 0.20 moles of sodium ethanoid to 500 cm cube of 0 0.10 of 0 0.10 moles per cm cube ethanoid acid. And the Ka for ethanoic acid, the Ka is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 5. All right, so this is the pH of the buffer made by adding 0 0.4 moles of sodium ethanoic. So 500 cm cube of 0 0.1 moles per cm cube ethanoic acid solution. Right now, we know that pH is equal to the negative log the concentration of the hydrogen ion. Clearly, we don't have the concentration of the hydrogen ion. We don't have pH to anti -log. So how are we going to get the hydrogen ions? All right, so Ka is equal to, which acid is it again? Ethanoid, ethanoid acid. So it will be CH3, COO minus H plus. If you notice, I don't have H plus screen here, and I'm going to tell you why. When it comes to buffer solutions, the Ka, this is what we use. Now remember, and I'm going to tell you right now. So for weak acids, remember we said that the hydrogen ion concentration and this ion would be equal. However, in a buffer solution, remember we use what? A salt. We use a salt as well, right? Sodium ethyl we do it. And when I was explaining buffers earlier, I said that most of the ion, most of the negative ion is coming from the salt that fully dissociates and not the actual acid. So no hydrogen ion is coming from the salt. The hydrogen ion is coming from the acid, but most of this ion is coming from the salt. So for buffers, the hydrogen ion concentration is not equal to the ethanoic ion because this ion is coming from the salt. So they cannot be equal. And so both of them are now in the equation. The next assumption that we make, right? The concentration, I can write it down. The concentration of the ethanoic ion we assume that the concentration of the ethanoid ion is the same as the concentration of the salt. So we assume that the concentration of the ethanoid ion is the same as the concentration of the salt. So we always make that assumption. So whichever negative ion is present, we assume that its concentration is the same as the salt. All right, over exactly. All right, let me see. So we're trying to find pH. So we need the hydrogen ion concentration. At the moment, we don't have the hydrogen. We don't have the hydrogen ion concentration. 
So we set up the equation again. Ka is equal to the products over the reactants. So remember, CA3, COOH, it will dissociate to give CA3, COO minus plus H plus. However, remember, we also have a salt. And I told you that when this salt dissociates, that is where most of the ethyl nugget ion is coming from. All right. So at this point, the hydrogen ion concentration cannot be equal to this ion because the hydrogen ion is only coming from the acid, but the ethyl nugget ion, most of it is coming from the salt. So for buffers, when you're doing Ka, it's Ka times Ka is equal to whatever limited time is produced and the hydrogen ion divided by the acid. So these two are not equal when it comes to buffer solution. Only when you're dealing with the weak acid calculations. So for buffers, they are not equal. The next thing, whatever the concentration of the salt is given, that will the concentration we are going to use for the negative ion. So the, we assume that the concentration of ethanoid ion is the same as whatever salt was given. All right. So if we need to get hydrogen ion concentration, we are going to transpose this formula for the hydrogen ion. All right. So let's start the calculation process. So just a moment. All right, so the first thing we need, right? Question, were we given the concentration of the salt? Yes. What was the concentration? Yes, sir. Two moles. DM2. Did, you, did it say 0 0.2 moles per DM cube or just yeah. moles? Moles. Just, oh, just, just moles. Exactly. So it's not the concentration. So we have 0 0.2 moles in 500 cm cube. So we have to calculate the concentration. So the concentration of sodium ethanoid, we know that concentration is mole over volume. And the mole was 0 0.2, 0 moles. I'm just going to convert the volume of so 500 cm cube to dm cube, that is 0 0.5 dm cube. All right, so the concentration of the salt, let me see how much I have calculated. Just a second. 0 0.4. Zero point four moles per dm cube. So this is the concentration of the salt, which means it is also the concentration of the acid. Now, if we transpose this formula, all right. So Ka, I'm going to put it back. All right. If you transpose, so this comes here. This comes here. So H plus should be equal to Ka times the concentration of the acid divided by the concentration of the ethanoid ion.
So the concentration of the acid was 0 0.1. What was K again? 1.7. Right, times the concentration, which is 0 0.1, divided by the concentration of the ion, which we said was 0 0.4. Let me check the answer. Four point two five times ten to the minus six. We should get. You can check it as well. We should get four point two five times ten to the minus six. Did you get that? Yes, sir. All right. Yes, sir. And so now that we have the hydrogen ion concentration, what should we do to get the pH? Minus log. Negative log, right. So the pH is equal to negative log 4.25 times 10 to the minus 6. How much I get? Let me see how much I get. 5.4. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that is how you will work it. And just a point. Just a point. Right. Just the only thing to point out here. If you notice, they gave with the moles, right? And you divide it by the volume to get the concentration. Yes? I got 5.069. 5.069? Yes, sir. I didn't use this method. I used the pH is equal to pKa plus log and base over acid. I got, well, I got 5 point something, so it's not far off. So I guess it's the ground enough part. Okay, sir. Yeah. Right. The point I was wanted to make: if they give you, if they give you like three grams of something, don't make that show you off, right? Just simply convert the gram into moles, and then divide the mole by the volume to, to get the concentration, right? So if you see the mass, just work out the moles. So remember, mole is mass divided by molar mass. So get the moles and then put the moles over the volume and you will have the concentration. Then you can proceed to using this formula. All right. So that is where I'm going to close for today. Let me just stop this.